Today what I want to talk about is a uh, Jean Berg oil dipstick temperature sensor. Uh, unfortunately they're no longer made but I happen to have one. I bought it back in the day and I got a request for, from somebody to see how it works and uh, I think it's, it's a pretty good idea to share it with the rest of you folks and uh, I'm trying to come up with an idea on how you could make your own or uh, if I could figure out how to do this I'd start manufacturing them. I don't know that there's any patent on it but uh, let's get started. Alright, what we've got here hopefully I can keep this all on the I've got to remember to keep it on. Here's what it is. Here's what it looks like the day I took it out of the package and it's still working good years and years and years later okay so you've got this brass tube and it's got an element inside which is t attached to this wire and if you look that wire is is loose in there that's that's your thermometer and the way this works let's let's continue on some of the things about it here okay the dimension is approximately as you can see is about seven inches which would be the length of your dipstick let me grab one of those out of the out of the engine here excuse me okay so here we've got a a dipstick and we've got the sensor looks like it's a little bit longer but it really doesn't make any difference because if you change your oil and put the proper amount of oil in it and use whatever dipstick you've got you could make etch a little mark on there just like the factory did with their marks as to where the normal level is so uh, that shouldn't be an issue but just trying to give you a comparison in length okay so we've got an overall length of nine inches from end to end and the approximate uh, dip level would be seven inches and the way this works and I think the way we could create our own here's if you look in your wife's uh, kitchen drawer she's probably got one of these poultry uh, sensors and I got a hot cup of coffee and you see the needle move okay presto changeo and that's the same principle that that works on here is a uh, oil this is kind of handy <laughs> this was out of my uh, out of my old sportster the uh, oil tank is right underneath your leg and this is where you add oil uh, and you could also use this to get the uh, temperature uh, as you're driving down the road so same principle it's all the same principle you got the needle that moves here's a uh, here's another version it's not quite long enough for what we want to do but it shows you that there are some things out there that are already made that we might be able to figure out. Someone can find one that's long enough that you could cut the end off of it here or drill a hole in the plastic and replace this needle with something that's conductive then we could come up with the same same deal. Now here's what happens you stick this in your engine and your engine is grounded it's ground grounded as part of the vehicle and you've got this wire which is not touching the grounded part of the vehicle it's insulated it's on this piece of plastic it's just a basic um, wire bundle tie you know use a screw but it's a smaller version it's very simple and it's lasted all these years it's proved the test of time so <clears throat> the wire that holds that on you've got that lead and that other end is going to connect up with the oil pressure sending unit the existing oil pressure sending unit it's going to share the same wire that attaches to the oil pressure sending unit and what that's going to do the oil pressure sending unit is a um, normally what is it <laughs> normally open 
Now when you turn on the normally closed switch because when you turn the ignition key you see the generator light and the oil light so it's a normally closed switch when you start it up and you get oil pressure it opens the circuit and the light goes out if you lose oil pressure it goes back to the normally closed position and lights the light up what happens with this temperature device is the wires gonna start moving around just like the needle did on the thermometer here and when it gets clear around over here and touches that screw it's gonna make the light usually there's enough vibration in the engine compartment air and the motor and so forth it just starts tapping against the screw and what happens is your oil pressure light on your dash in the stock position stock light starts flickering if you slow down or do something to avoid the heat it, it moves away from the screw for example you're climbing up a long steep hill or a mountain pass or you're loaded down and you're and you're driving really fast on a hot day that's gonna warm up and it's gonna touch the screw and start bouncing off of it and you're gonna slow down if you were to see the light come on constant that would mean that your oil pressure switch is sensing a loss of oil and you want to pull over immediately and stop and check it out if it's just flickering at you you just want to do whatever it takes to to cool off the engine I wouldn't recommend shutting it off I would recommend slowing it down 10 or 15 20 miles an hour now how do you calibrate this okay you take something of a known temperature like this is uh, going right up here to a hundred approximately a hundred and forty degrees okay so what I'd want to do is decide at what temperature I want this to start warning me if you're not using synthetic oil if you're using regular oil they say that 240 degrees the oil starts to break down so maybe what you want to do is calibrate this to say 210 degrees gives you a little margin for error there so you would want to put your cup of coffee or a can of oil on the stove in the kitchen or whatever and heat it up to that point 200 and 10 degrees we're going to use that for a set point 210 degrees so while that's in there 210 degrees you're going to set this in there with it and you're going to see this this is just going to rip around here 90 you know lickety split and at whatever temperature it is it's going to stop right there because this is just a basically a thermometer so that's when when you get that to 210 degrees it's going to move over there you want to loosen the screw and slide it over to where it touches it now you've got it calibrated for whatever you choose and you know again it's like the mark over here it, it it's a reference point and what I've always done with this when I build a new engine or I'm going on a long trip or I have you know summertime I wouldn't worry about it in the wintertime but in the summertime when you're you know hot weather and stuff or if you had a bus for example those things run hot anyhow you know you'd want that warning to tell you you know I gotta pull over and let it cool off or slow down or do whatever it takes so pretty interesting pretty simple I can't remember what these things sold for originally and obviously he probably you know had a lot of them made and you know it's got a little crimp spot right here and this acts as your ground because it's touching the motor so uh, let's go ahead and stick this on the engine and I'll show you what it looks like when you got it hooked up on the engine okay so we're looking at a type 1 engine in a regular sedan an upright Volkswagen engine here's your dipstick so what you do is you take your dipstick out wipe it off and I would keep it in the car not necessarily in the engine compartment but I would keep it with you then you can replace this Ah. and any you don't have to use your dipstick if, you, if it's full and you've got a reference mark then you can 
you can always look at it and reference it. What I found is probably the same thing that you're seeing here. It's hard to see the oil if it's new and it's clean on this bronze stick. So I usually ended up using the stock stick to uh, check it. Anyhow, now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to drop it down there and there's things in here that you have to be careful of not touching and I'm going to run my wire behind the generator stand <laughs> maybe <laughs> I usually ran dual carburetors and there was more room this one's got the stock carburetor but believe me your uh, spark plug wires and stuff I think I found a path <laughs> Where are you going here? Okay, you run it behind your generator stand, under the manifold, behind the distributor. <laughs> Just go along with me. I'm going to try it one more time. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to turn this off and fight with it, okay? Ooh, wee. It's uh, four hours later. <laughs> time lapse photography. And I got it installed. So, <laughs> let's see if I can get you in a little bit closer here. All right, now you can see things are close right there, and you've got your wire that's going behind the generator stand and over to the side. So, you don't want this screw to touch your any metal because if you touch any metal with that it's going to cause your light to come on because it's going to complete the circuit. So what happens is this is just dangling out here and as you start your engine up and it starts running it comes around 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 and if it gets too hot usually it runs about here it'll it'll run about a 90 degree angle to that that's about normal and if it gets too hot it'll come up here and it'll start tapping on the screw the light will flicker and you know you gotta slow down and since it's just a thermometer and it's loose and it needs to be free like that that's when you know it's set up right and the other side here is gonna come out and you can get a I don't have one I looked all over my electric stuff right now I'd have to rob it off something else but they have a a one to two spade both of the oil sending unit and this unit so you put the female part over here and you're gonna have two male prongs sticking out after that and you're gonna hook both of these to the oil pressure sending unit which is located right down there behind the distributor so uh, that's how it works it's pretty slick um, once I started trusting my motor and understood, uh, you know, the driving conditions and so forth, I used to take it off because it was actually it was a pain in the neck. Because every time you want to check your your oil, you've got that uh, uh, wire and it's warm and it you know it just makes a simple job a little harder. So. And you want to make sure that you keep it away from your fan belt. And you don't want to be messing with this stuff while the engine's running. And uh, be safe. And that's how the Geneberg oil temperature dipstick system works and alerts you that you're running hot. Thanks for watching. And apologize for making it so long. I, I know I could have probably simplified it. But you never know who's going to be watching these videos. And you have to... Uh, as you know, uh, keep it as simple as you can. There might be somebody that's just seeing this for the very first time and doesn't have the same mechanical aptitude that you have. So I just want to make sure they get the right idea because there's more than one way of, of skinning a cat. And this is pretty slick because it's not you're not reading the block temperature. You're reading the actual oil in the reservoir that's being picked up by the oil pump and sent throughout the engine and and oil plays a critical part in Volkswagen on cooling so uh, this is very effective very simple and it works thanks